Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Luke. Jesus told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of my income. But the tax collector standing far off would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Here ends the lesson. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It may come as a shock to you what I'm about to tell you, but this is the truth. Uh, clergy are, uh, are sinful people. Um, there's a great story a long time ago about a, a young little granddaughter of a bishop, and she was at the summer camp, and, she, and the teacher of the summer camp was talking about clergy, and, and he said, you know, Priests do not lie. And this little bishop's granddaughter raised her little hand and she goes, well, my grandfather's a bishop and, and he lies. And everyone turned and looked at her and she said, well, he said he'd quit smoking after the big church meeting and he never did. And I like that story, quite frankly, because it's the truth. We clergy, we're just, you know, kind of goofy ourselves. And so whenever I hear this story about this, uh, these two men and, and uh, this righteous man who looks off over at the poor sinful man and says, I'm glad I'm not like him. I'm glad I'm not like him. I'm glad I'm me. I'm glad I have all these things. It reminds me that we do, we human beings, tend to create the, uh, or do rather, the first sin, the original sin. And it's not uh, eating an apple. It's the sin of comparison. The sin of comparison is the one sin that we all, I believe, in this day and age uh, suffer from. Our, uh, our comparison of ourselves on social media uh, has only amplified the way that we used to do it uh, by cross-comparing ourselves to each other, by putting each other down for the way our shoes look, or, or talking about each other and what, we've, what, we've, what we're wearing, or, and our dresses and our suits, all the way to how we raise our children. I don't raise my children like that. I'm glad I do it this way. I am this and they are that. I don't need to. They are that. It is indeed the original sin. And what we are called to is humility, the humility of the truth, that we ourselves, we human beings, are broken and need to be put back together. I say this a lot in this, this house of worship of St. Mark's, but I like to remind people of the word religion and what true religion is. Religion has a, its root in the idea to reconnect, religio, ligaments, the things that keep ourselves, our bodies together. When we do good religion, we are in the work of reconnecting. And what we do in this place is we are working to reconnect people to God through the love and gift of Jesus, through this person who offered himself to the world as a way to reconnect us lost sheep to our God. We forget ourselves too often and we think too highly of ourselves too much and we should be reminded 
that God loved the world, that he gave his son to us, that we might be reconnected, that we might be in a religio and be re-ligamented. And we use our re-ligamented selves not to shove and to push and to kick and to run at, but we use our re-ligamented selves in the name of Jesus to bring close, to hold, to clasp a hand, to seek forgiveness, to offer our prayers, to kneel. We use our re-ligamented selves to the glory of our God. And that is the work. It's hard work. It's not easy work. But it definitely is a, a way for us to step away from the sin of comparison and step towards a God who offers us salvation, forgiveness, care, grace, dignity, and all of the beautiful things that Paul would say are the fruits of the Spirit. So as you make your way into your life, stop comparing yourself to whomever and start remembering your God loves you and exalts you and loves you more than you'll ever know, ask, or imagine. Amen.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A colic for the formation ministry of our church. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, enlightened by thy Holy Spirit those who teach and those who learn, that rejoicing in the knowledge of thy truth, they may worship thee and serve thee from generation to generation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the same spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.